how can we face a panic attack or anxiety attack and get them more under control long term? Well, first, I have found that a lot of times people who suffer from panic attacks or generalized anxiety or even racing thoughts, a lot of times have a lot of things they are, they fear and things they're not willing to try because they don't want to have that, that response of where they go into that fight or flight mode, which essentially the fight or flight mode is, you know, you could just be sitting there, something's presented to you that's not a threat, and you start having that racing heart feeling, that, you know, sweatiness, that clammy, that clammy feeling, um, your thoughts become so focused you can't think, you can't think critically. Some people who take tests have this issue as well. Now, one thing that can really help first is getting, if you feel an anxiety attack coming on, and I know for some people you don't ever feel them coming on, they just, they're like a flip of a switch. But the first thing I encourage is to always keep, if you can, a cold beverage with you. You might go, why a cold beverage? Because it has been shown that if you start feeling anxiety coming on, touching something that is in particular really cold, that sensory feeling can help calm you and help prevent, prevent you from going into a further fight or flight of the central nervous system and continue to stimulate you. The key is, is to minimize that stimulation and be able to go through and deal with it. So a cold beverage. The second thing is, if you're currently not having a panic attack or anxiety, trying to in a controlled setting, keyword controlled setting, try to practice or mimic this. And, and a lot of times with that practicing, it's hard to do, but the next time you know there's something that, for example, people who go to the doctor even, and they have white coat syndrome, which means like they're afraid to like you know get their vitals taken or their blood pressure will be sky high when it's really not that high it's just they have that fear of seeing the doctor would be doing things like even watching videos of doctors taking uh, your blood pressure if you can at a CVS or at a pharmacy to practice cuz it's it's the little if you're if you're actively trying to improve on that anxiety it has been shown that it will get easier. And I'm not saying you'll beat it or it'll be gone completely, but it'll get easier over time and you can minimize your reaction to it. Another thing to look at if you suffer from anxiety are, are you taking any medications? Are you using any drugs? A lot of times things obviously such as caffeine or stimulants can affect your reaction in your fight or flight if you start having an anxiety attack. So if you have a, if you have an anxiety disorder or panic attack disorder and you're using something such as a stimulant or whatnot, that can affect sometimes the way you respond. And I'm not by any means saying stop your medication, go talk to your doctor about it. At the same time, sometimes medication is also needed, something that's going to bring down that fight or flight. Sometimes such, something such as a non-benzo or even sometimes in extreme cases, a benzo that can help that should be used only in situations where it is not controlled. The more, what I have found, the more you rely on something to help fix it, the worse it can get. That's why if you're currently having one or you anticipate a potential panic attack, like you've got to catch a flight, trying to practice it as best you can but at the same time, even if you go on the plane and you have that awareness of what could potentially happen and what's going on with your body, just know it is other people, other people as well are suffering this and are suffering from this and there are strategies that can help. With, for example, the plane idea, a thing you can do as well today with the internet there are ways and there there are there are ways you can kind of mock getting on a plane through watching visual uh, visual uh, planes for example taking off not it's not going to be the experience of obviously being on a in a plane but of 
getting in the getting in the framework or mind that you're going to be on the plane and you might go that'll just make it worse actually if you in a way practice it i'm not saying fixate on it but practice it a little bit just a little bit to where you're not having a full out panic attack it'll make it to where when you finally do catch that flight or get on the flight it can help minimize it another thing as well is once again is to remember that what is going on a lot of times when you're having these panic attacks and that fear is it is a non-dangerous threat that your body is sending you that your brain it that your brain essentially is pushing to you a non a non-dangerous threat an outside threat that you're perceiving as being dangerous causing once again i know i say it again but it's that fight or flight keeping that in mind keeping that in mind you'd be shocked at how much that can actually can actually help you as well is to realize okay if you st if you if you know these things it makes you feel like you're not the you're not the only one that is going through it it's just you display it potentially a little bit different than everyone than other individuals and there are people who have very extreme reactions and less reaction as well some people just get sweaty for example some people have a racing heart some people you can't even tell what's going on but they're definitely having to an extent a panic attack now finally i'll leave you with this as well that if you're if you're currently having a panic attack or you're trying to prevent one two things taking and i know you've probably heard this a lot taking a deep breath trying to if you're like sitting up straight taking a deep breath like this close and you don't have to close your eyes if you don't want, but when you, I do, just because I like to eliminate everything else around, when you take a deep breath, inhale in through your nose, hold it for three seconds, and feel all that air going through your lungs and going, going up your lungs, down your lungs, and then exhale over, over another three seconds. And if you're in a situation when you're with a lot of people, if you practice this at home, it'll make it to where when you're out in public and if you feel one, you can do it with your eyes open and it's practicing getting back in tune with your body to where when you're taking that deep breath in, every other stimulus going around, you can push away and you can focus on yourself. Doing that, couple, doing that before bed and right when you wake up in the morning can help. And also, and the glorious thing about that is you don't have to do it multiple times multiple times once you get if you start practicing it sometimes it just takes one breath and then after that inhale and exhale another thing that can help is actually bearing down you might go what's bearing down bearing down is essentially just for example when you're taking a deuce a crap a poop whatever you call it it's that bearing down that you know bearing down stimulates your vagus nerve which can stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the opposite of your sympathetic nervous system. So sympathetic, everything's up, heart rate, respiratory rate. Parasympathetic via vagus nerve through bearing down for two seconds. And you don't have to do it hard. You don't want to have an aneurysm or anything, but just bearing down, just, you know, just bearing down a little bit, doing that for two to three seconds. Stimulation of the vagus nerve and you can go about your day. So practice these techniques, they can really help. That is your video on just some tips that can help with anxiety and things that can help you face your fears as well. Because when you face your fears, that ultimately helps reduce the amount of anxiety you have.